Hi, how's it? Um, it's the Cran K. What's up? I hope you're good. So we're still busy explaining this phenomena, this thing that's going on, and my scalp was itching, so I scratched it. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I was busy in the previous part. Please go check out that part. Uh, to gauge your bearings, I'm sorry, I just drank some water. Yeah, please go gauge your bearings by checking it out to figure out what we're talking about over here. <clears throat> If, however, uh, you, you don't want to do that, it's cool. Let's just carry on from here. Okay, right, cool. So this um, temptation that's gawking at me, I have explained what it is to you guys in my previous part. Uh, my mom, my family, right, has made a decision that because I'm the only one unemployed and they've been hurting me for like very many years, now they are taking away Wi-Fi. That would, under normal circumstances, appear to be normal because my mom is retiring and she wants to cut costs and whatnot of what it is that she spends her money on but we all know that retirees old people that are no longer going to a nine to five job the last thing they want is to just be left alone in eerie silence doing nothing all day long unable to even twiddle their fingers and thumbs so therefore the new entertainment or the new company of the elderly tends to be internet that there are many things that my mom can cut and indeed she has up until this point but there are others that can't be cut because they're just as essential almost as like electricity and water very well my mother has no intention of going without internet or even airtime because it's important to always have it because people need to be called if at all there is an emergency and all that jazz so this is an individual that wants to continue to buy data bundles this is an individual that wants to continue to buy data bundles. Never mind that. I have a little sister that lives here with my mom. She's like 22, right? And this human individual has a job. I don't know what she does. I think it's a call center, right? And um, she does not pay my mother anything. I'm pretty sure of it. And she has been one of the biggest and baddest beneficiaries of Wi-Fi in the household. And earlier today, I overheard my mom having a conversation with one of my other cousins on the phone, speaking about how it is that she's cutting Wi-Fi. Mochai. And she has told my sister, my little sister, that she's going to have to make an arrangement with Vodacom or with whatever cell phone provider or telecommunications provider to help her out with data or help her out with internet. Okay, so my little sister who is employed, a travesty by the way, given that I don't have a job and I'm a whole 17 years older than her and my unemployment is entirely man-made has nothing to do with my lack of skills, nothing to do with my lack of desire to work, and nothing to do with my irresponsibility, and all to do with a wicked country, including a wicked people that want to manipulate people using uh, poverty to force them to do whatever they want to do. All these things befell me when I came to Christ, and I'm like, I see what you're doing, I'm on to you. Nonetheless, there could be, they could be less interested in what I'm on to, because at the end of the day, I don't have a job. Okay, very well. So here it is that I'm unemployed, however, nobody else out here in these streets is unemployed. Uh, just me uh, my family my mom made a decision to get rid of dstv after she saw the glories and splendors or at least what she imagines are glories and splendors to me they're just a woke organization with silly entertainment netflix she saw the glory and splendors of netflix of streaming type television where you can you know it's like video on demand it's what you want right now and you don't gotta pause or wait and like predict in programming television for 10 years before you can watch the episode the next episode of your favorite television show it was better than dstv even the kind that you can pause and rewind and record right i think it's called who cares right -o. Mm. she decimated killed nipped in the bud her dstv TV subscription okay because she now had you know this beautiful thing called Netflix she got rid of it because she didn't see the need to no actually she didn't get rid of it entirely because there are these like weird shows she keeps watching it's like what is ABC right uh, but she kept a very basic version of DSTV like very basic in order to be able to watch Scheme Sam or something she's got very basic DSTV not the kind you can rewind and stop and pause it has a name who cares what it is all right uh, because Netflix was this glorious thing that she discovered ever since my older sister you know introduced it to us all my older the sister of which the subscription of Netflix was transferred over to my mom's account so my mom is now paying for 
on Netflix, and you know with Netflix, four family members can be on the same thing, you know, Bobby. I was the first person to gain access to my sister's Netflix, and then my oldest, my little sister, was number two. Uh, when did I gain access to my sister's Netflix? One time when I was at her apartment, she entertained me by, you know, us watching something on Netflix, and I stayed on my computer, so I was still able once. My mom got Wi-Fi to continue watching Netflix here. And then uh, bandwagoning on it was my little sister, and then my mom. My mom, once she got introduced to Netflix, was like, what glory is this? She loved it more than dstv so she agreed since my older sister was going through some financial problems to take over the subscription it's not even that much at the time it was like 170 bucks or something might be like 250 now it doesn't matter but it's still a very small amount of money cheaper even than the dstv premium that she was paying so she made a decision to do away with the expensive version i keep forgetting what it is called of DSTV and settled for Netflix so she can still watch Kim Sam but also have Netflix running and yeah well that's been something that has been going on for like a whole year now when you or two or three when you get yourself used to Netflix I mean everybody knows that social media is a drug everybody knows that entertainment is a drug who in the world is trying to withdraw when it is in their power not to have to withdraw that's what I'm so I'm speaking about right now right so if you have gotten yourself accustomed to streaming on absolutely whatever you want to stream on on youtube on you know tiktok on the internet the google machine is your best friend because everything is at your fingertips and on top of that you can watch netflix anytime you want to watch netflix and any plethora of shows is there for you to check out and you know whenever there's a new thing it gives you a little beepy notification and you're excited because it understands your needs its algorithms are operating on your behalf social media has been manufactured indeed to cause out of you to have an opioid addiction unbeknownst to yourself so go on right ahead and allow yourselves you purging beasts you because this is like the total purge crime is legal for a whole night okay go on right ahead and purge while also putting yourself into a, a drug cessation just stop taking drugs and jail. cold turkey i dare you take like stop taking drugs cold turkey just overnight without any intervention by a doctor without any intervention by a spiritual leader without any intervention at all to enable you to kind of you know go through the shakes overnight with somebody holding your hand go do you i dare you Abs like cure yourself from the addiction of social media and netflix with no help with no help Amba sisters hamp hamp hmm? go on right ahead and in fact you know what i don't even think DSTV is around guys because it's been so quiet in the house the current cessation of um D D D D D D not DSTV what is this television right now of internet that this is a mistake i believe there is a month left because this happened just ever so suddenly and it also happened before the end of the month the when the, the internet started doing a glitchy thing i imagine was a hardware issue it happened around the 30th may ends on the 31st but on the first the internet was down and dead altogether so i really don't believe that this was something that was supposed to happen yet but i do believe it was supposed to happen in july therefore there's going to be a correction i believe that this is a thing because there is no way under heaven that they would have allowed for this to happen without there being contingency plans in place Plus, I um, uh, sort of kind of happened upon understanding perhaps uh, yesterday, not perhaps, indeed it was yesterday, right? Um, that it was indeed a, not planned at all. It wasn't because um, I don't want to be eavesdropped on. Whatever. It was indeed eavesdropped uh, uh, Not uh, What is this? Not eavesdropped on. It was not planned because I overheard my little sister on the phone yesterday basically just crying and complaining to um, both my mom and also what I later came to learn was the service provider for the Wi-Fi. I said, but it's not working and it hasn't been working all day yesterday. What's going on there? So I'm pretty sure that this was not supposed to happen. Why e a t yet i'm pretty sure it was not supposed to happen yet so i got relieved yesterday because it's been gone now for like about 48 hours and so it's been really very taxing but thankfully before that 48 hour season came remember the internet had died um i told you guys about this issue with wondershare for mora in my earlier parts right how i needed to fix an issue with them i had a remote session with them one morning and the night before for like a good three hours there was no internet the thing was beeping and flashing and it was just giving us all grief so i prayed and i asked the lord please make it available because i got a remote session with wondershare for mora in the morning and indeed he availed it so it was already glitching and twitching and pulling a strange stunt earlier right in the month or prior to the very 
very end of the month, which is when usually services would get severed for um, products that you have purchased that you are stopping, you know, the the continual continual flow off very well. Um, so I knew that there was an issue with it, likely linked to the hardware being kind of old or whatever. Cool beans, because we got this when COVID-19 slapped the living out of everybody. That would have been like, what, 2019, 2020, 2023 now. So it's about three years old. And uh, so it might, it might just be hard way. Anyway, whatever. Very well. So I knew that the issue was not cessation of services in this regard. That I just got to wait a couple of days and we'll be good to go. And in a couple of days, figure out how to pass time. I knew that that was a thing. And indeed, I confirmed that it was a thing when I overheard my little sister speaking with not only my mom, but also the service provider on some, but like you guys, you know, like it's been dead for a minute. Come fix it, fix it, fix it. Okay, very well. So when I overheard this, <laughs> I, I breathed an unfortunate sigh of relief. And the reason why I say it is unfortunate was because I had absolutely no understanding in my call that it's temporary, that the day is going to arrive when permanently all such services will be eradicated from my plate. And I was like, oh my, right? Oh my. Except I wasn't like, oh my, I was very sad. Because what am I going to do as a dying old woman at the back of her mother's house without internet? They have shoved me into retirement, unpreparedly so, because that's not what I wanted to do. And here it is that I'm facing the life of a geriatric, living Gokasi with no internet, dying very quickly. What's going on? And I was like, whoa, God, but like, the gospel goes out through this internet machine. How are we going to do the gospel with that? And how am I going to find out what's happening with my brethren across the world? Where am I going to get current information? Where under heaven am I going to learn about Target hooking up like satanic wear for children? Who's going to tell me that when there's no internet? Very well. So that then was the circumstance that I was walking out very uncomfortably until it got invalidated this discomfort of mine by individuals lamenting that but like where is the service where somebody tell me where the service is at and when respected and regarded individuals were complaining about the service not being around I was like okay look if the respected and regarded individuals are lamenting about this thing that I need it must mean it is well on its way back it's gonna come back it's just temporarily disbanded for whatever reason i imagine it might just be software not software but hardware okay so i'm sitting at you waiting you know patiently filing my nails literally i'm sitting here waiting patiently filing my nails for this to be fixed right and then i overhear a disturbing conversation following which i was like oh well i guess it doesn't make any sense to be excited now I guess it doesn't make any sense to be relieved now because it is a, you know, like peace and security, peace and security, and then suddenly calamity. It is a false peace. It is a false peace for me to think that just give it a couple of days, you know, let the weekend pass. And after the weekend, we're good to go, you guys. Mm, no, pointless because I confirmed my worst fears. I'm sorry. Today, today I confirmed my worst fears that this issue with the software was just happenstance. This issue with the software, not software, but the hardware was just a glitch and a twitch that just so happened to happen at around the same time as a nefarious strategy is being plotted against me. I was like, what in the world is going on over here? Lord, oh Lord, why am I being teased so gladly? Why is this thing continuing? to happen in such a fashion as this is very disturbing why was i made to feel as if though who it's nothing but a software a hardware issue when it wasn't what was with the glitchy and the twitchy why did you make this thing glitchy and twitchy two nights ago why did you make this thing glitchy and twitchy three nights ago why did you do that oh lord like there's somebody walking around in the periphery and it's disturbing me because i i can't speak with peace i'm using a lot of code talk right now as you can tell because uh, i don't want to be overheard i don't want to be eavesdropped on but yeah anyway let's just speak right i will continue to use my code talk until such time that individual said individual is in the house okay very well cool so i, I went and i asked the lord hey mm -mm, where's that language that uh, because the whole twitching and glitching of it two nights ago i already suspected that it might be because they're deciding to sever ties with the service because i am always the target of strange wrong like really terrible decisions that are made literally hoping to cut you off your own nose that your face entirely might be spited and um, the face in this equation is me 
and the nose is them they're hurting themselves in order that um i might ultimately be the worst off because i stand to be the worst off given my conditions my circumstances given that i am unemployed given that i have got absolutely hands tied behind my back with no ability to do anything for myself so if if they severed this provision this particular service i would be worse off but all this in the in at the very exact same time when people could just decide to be wise in how it is that they employ a strategy rather than absolutely choke hold the whole house to an excruciating loneliness to choke hold the entire home to an excruciating silence to an excruciating pin drop in the ocean that you can hear when you walk around because people can't stream on Netflix. I dare you to go and buy data bundles and stream for hours on end on Netflix over a show that you might decide in season one, episode three, that you don't want to keep watching. So you're going to move on to the next one. So you're going to feel like you wasted all of your data on episode one and two to see where the plot of this thing is going to go. Whereas when you've got Wi-Fi, you can just dump shows on Netflix and move on to the next one. Plus, like I said, Netflix is this like funny little drug. It's an opioid. It's excessively addictive. And in its addictive na nature and state, if you want to get offered, you really have got to go to a very excellent like rehab facility where they're going to enable you to not withdraw so badly. Mm. You don't just quit cold turkey overnight. Certain things, you got to wean yourself off them. You have to exercise some pretty excruciating discipline and on top of that you got to plan for it in advance but there are drugs that you just don't need to be getting off at this point sometimes because you need them since they're chronic medication for the condition that you've got going down and right now the condition of the planet is called i don't know we're all dying we're dead in trespasses and sins we're going into the tribulation life sucks and because of that the moral turpitude of the earth is at an exquisite height everybody hates everybody there's no love here um love of many has grown cold because of an increase in lawlessness so i'm gonna live vicariously through other people on the internet yes this like internet drug this opioid that's frankly just killing everybody all over the show is frankly saving a lot of lives as well it's enabling people not to put a gun to their head on christmas day when they're not spending it with anybody the internet enables lonely souls to just feel not so lonely anymore the world has made themselves lonely with this drug however this drug is also the very cure that of the disease that it has has caused the internet has caused humanity to be more lonely however it is also the cure for humanity's loneliness so if you're gonna cure this thing you need like I don't know Jesus yeah to come and reign here for a thousand years and show you just how to live like drop these phones and start talking to each other only Christ will achieve that ability to basically purge everybody off this like drug if anything the tribulation is going to be the greatest rehab from the internet because that's gonna cut supply of many things on the earth including electricity so therefore internet is obviously going to fall apart in the tribulation but in the run up to it is literally saving lives it is rehabilitating some folk it is like a an evil nefarious pharmaceutical industry company that is deciding not to provide a cure or make known market a cure for a disease because it would much rather treat it that's what the internet is like it is treating diseases that you have even though there is a cure for it it's called drop the phone drop the internet and go into the wild and understand that nature lives and so too does god who created it know and understand that people are indeed around you to talk to and not so much your phone mm. you who is developing some funny little neck issue because you're always looking down at your cell phone device for very well yeah the internet is an opioid a drug created by a nefarious organization that can give you a cure but it gives you rather a treatment so you need it it is a temporary fix the world needs it to not have so many suicides the world needs it to not feel so lonely the world is in dire need of this thing so when uh, i have an old girl i had this like excellent marvelous design and uh, decide to extract it from just your household and live like i don't know in the stone ages what are you doing aka has passed away until two days from today what am I aware? Not alone. Who, who doesn't know what in the world was spoken in the state of the nation addressed by our president? Because you can go and stream on it, given that it was given at a time when you were at work or sleeping. How in the world are you going to be the only one that does not find out that, I don't know, Vladimir Putin has finally decided to press that button on America? How? Oh, how? You're going to be number 20 to find out when you used to be the first one there. This thing is addictive. That's what I'm getting at. It is so addictive. Indeed, it has been created so addictively 
by the ogre, the, the, the creators of it, to make it also appear to love you. Algorithms are freaky, they're eerie, they even read your mind. Some people have gone so far as to say that they feel like their computers have read their minds. That's what's good. They recommend items for you to buy and they miraculously also provide you information that you feel you are in dire need of reading. You click on it and click on it and feel like it's fixing your wounds. It is your therapist. That is what the internet is, be it on TikTok, Twitter, or just Google. And you feel like, do lazy. Even if you've got another browser that has nothing to do with these like mega maniacal um, organizations, go to Silicon Valley in the United States. Bottom line is, it is the shrink you are in dire need of when you can't even afford therapy. That is the new drug that internet access is and people are trying to quit it cold turkey all to punish a disciple. There was this testimony that I was listening to back in the day of a dude that escaped the occult by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood cleansed him free from that nefarious time. Mm. However, in the run-up to he was doing strange things and among them were human sacrifices. He spoke about how he killed a whole bunch of people just to get to one Christian. Like he would cause an accident, a, a multi-car pileup on the highway insofar as there was a Christian in the bus involved in one of those accidents. Like, just to get to one Christian, they would kill everybody. Knock everybody out like dominoes. That's the insensitivity and the insanity, therefore, of the occult. They're happy to knock everybody down. Dominoes allow many families to bury people on the weekend just to get to one little Christian. And the level of defeatism is so exorbitant that they do not for the life of them care when even it affects them to hurt other people on the periphery well herein lies the occultic strategy of strange defeatist souls wreaking havoc in their internet access across the entire household hurting their own hearts and their own addiction causing themselves to withdraw unbeknownst to themselves that they're not ready for that withdrawal just to get to carabo I do not know, but if you are by collateral damage going to afflict your own self just to get to me, you are employing an occult strategy, do you understand? You are doing that which is insanely obviously the work of Usantani, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. We war not against flesh and blood but against rulers, principalities, virtual wickedness in high places ants we are dealing with strange little ants in the occult that's what's good and they make people cray cray they make people so cray cray that they're gonna go shoot themselves in the foot in the knee in the thigh in the buttock and even in the cheek just to get a to the arm that's what's good yeah absolutely defeatist but they're gonna do it anyway now if somebody is employing so a strange strategy as that and we're not you cannot hope for the rational thinking of people why because when demons are around they make emily rose crawl up a wall yours is to find another way to survive until this individual gets i don't know exorcised by jesus or they fall down to the earth you know now earth to share ground yourself they're saying in clueless eh, until such time that they realize that this ain't working it's freezing this is antarctic i did not sign up to live like go 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 antarctic i didn't sign up to live in alaska and as i didn't sign up to live in a snowy environment frankly just to get to garabo bottom line is i like it when it's warm i like blankets i like it when it's nice and cushy I like being close to the fire um, display. I like being next to the fire, what do they call it? Fire um, place, thank you. You know when you forget words because people are trying to make you forget words, whatever. Mm, that's what's good. Yeah, if you like your warmth, if you like sunny weather, you don't move to Europe. Like you should stick around in Africa. But if you're going to move to Africa to spite a country in Africa, Europe is going to give you a frostbite and you're not going to know whether you're coming or going. Come back home. Like, hang out in the African sun. It's properly happy to be there with you. You've got melanated skin. So, frankly, you've got, like, natural sun protection. Don't leave. Don't leave me, girl. But after you beg a person to stay where they want to stay, ultimately, they'll be back. But not before first insisting that I'm going to spite Congo by leaving all of Africa. Like, no, you can just go to Zanzibar. But no, you're going to spite Congo. You're gonna spite Africa because oh, what is a Congo? What is Africa? Oh Lord, you like somewhere in I don't know, like Italy. Go live there where they can't even speak your language. They don't understand what you're saying, and there's like a whole bunch of racism. Do you go live in Italy? Ha hang ten. Go say hi to the Pope over there and try and correct him with his doctrine if at all you want to be Christian about it. But like, understand you'll be back. It's time for Africa. Next part.